What's up, guys? It's Casey Zogelman, a.k.a. The Fourth Sanderson Sister, coming at you with another Hocus Pocus 2 breakdown video. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the newest image of the Sanderson Sisters in Hocus Pocus 2, and um, there actually wasn't a whole lot to it, but there were four points that I kind of want to look at. So, let's do it. So, first off, in the top left corner behind lovely sister Sarah we see a very large bird cage but the bird cage is empty because the birds are on the outside now the thing is I can't tell if those are crows they almost look too small to be crows you know what I mean or if they're more red-winged blackbirds but there's no there's no uh, red on them so with there not being any red, I don't know if these are just blackbirds or like I said, they could just be plastic crows for decoration, but it's interesting that the birds are on the outside of the cage. So this brings me to the fact that this is more bird imagery, like that friggin' red-winged blackbird that has shown up twice now. Um, there's more birds, uh... Do you think that this could mean it's a symbolism tactic to mean freedom? Because the birds are outside of the cage instead of in the cage. They're not trapped in the cage. They're on the outside of the cage, so they're free to fly and roam around. I think it means freedom. But who is the bird in the cage is the thing. Who's the bird in the cage in this, in this scenario? It could be the three new antagonists and I say antagonists in the form of the opposition not that they're the villain so meaning the three new girls it could mean them Becca could feel trapped in a cage by her being a loner and by her bad relationship with her stepmother who I guess we're just never gonna meet um, by wanting her powers and not having any powers until I guess this movie we'll see how that works out um kind of thing could be could be Becca could be Cassie maybe Cassie's got some issues maybe Cassie's the bird in the cage kind of like I theorized um on Monday with uh Mayor Trask since she is his uh daughter maybe she was adopted and he's kind of the cage and she's the bird uh um, maybe she's the bird. We don't know enough about Izzy for me to say, yeah, she could be a bird in a cage. I don't know jack about Izzy, so I'm not going to make that assumption. Could be one of them. Maybe the bird in the cage is the enchantress and they're going to set her free. I don't know. Um, we still don't know a lot about her either. Maybe, maybe it's Gilbert. Maybe Gilbert's the bird in the cage. I don't know. But here's the most likely scenario. The sisters are the bird in the cage. <laughs> The Sanderson sisters are the bird in the cage. They're trying to find their freedom. They're trying to get out of the cage. They're trying to get to freedom. So, everything we've seen with them, that friggin' bird has been there. <laughs> so, I think our most likely thing is they're the birds in the cage and they're trying to get to the outside of the cage. Now, we don't know what that cage is. We don't know if that cage is people trying to suppress their powers because they're witches and people don't like witches. I don't know. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, could it be that the cage is the pact they made with, I'm assuming, the Enchantress um, right now, or the pact they made with the devil through the Enchantress that, that I'm assuming they got tricked into? I don't know. We don't know yet. Could have been a moment of desperation. I don't know. Maybe that's their cage. They're trying to break out of that pact and be free. Um, so yeah, we're getting more bird imagery. <laughs> now adding the cage in there, we're definitely looking at something more like freedom for someone. Again, I don't know who that freedom is for. Um, most likely it's for the Sanderson sisters, but it could be for one of the new uh, characters. And now, let's move on to the next part. 
There's an antique telephone behind Mary. At least I think that's what it is. It looks like an antique telephone. I think it's just there. <laughs> I don't think there's anything to that telephone, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think it's just a telephone. That probably doesn't work anymore. Or it could work and it could come in handy later when somebody's calling for help. Could be a funny running gag. They didn't do anything with a telephone last time with the uh, with the sisters. That'd be interesting. Um, instead of having them play with a smartphone, they find an antique telephone. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Could just be there for decoration. Um, and then, it, obviously, right in the middle, we see Book is on the table. Book is on the table. Winifred's looking over the book. She's kind of looking like, oh, I just found the page I was looking for. Kind of like in the beginning when she, uh, of the first one when she found, um, the cat spell. So it's very clear that she has found the page she is looking for. And she's very excited. Or she kind of almost looks a little bit flustered. Maybe the flustering is for the fact that these certain conditions need to be met, um, before probably dawn. Um... For them to do what it is that they need to do, which is carry out revenge against, again, someone. Um, most likely Trask, but we don't know who, and we don't know what. We do know where. The where is in Salem. We don't know the who, the why, or the what, or the what, or the how. We know the where. <laughs> um, everything else is still kind of up in the air. So she kind of looks a little flustered, but she also just kind of looks like, oh, I've just found what I've been looking for. Um, as Sarah and Mary enthusiastically look on. Um, so, as they do, because they're adorable. Um, so yes, we see book on the table, but here's the question that I'd like to raise. Do we think that's real book, or do we think that is fake book? Because it could be fake book. Maybe that's what Winifred's discovering. She's opened it up and is like, that's not my spell. What is this? <laughs> and it's being like, oh, it's fake book. Where's real book? We gotta go find real book. So, I don't know. Could be a replica. Could be a real thing. Could be our boy. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a conundrum we could we could see popping up. Is that it's not actually book. It's a replica of book and actual book is in someone else's hands and we don't know who that someone could be. Trask! Um, <laughs> I'm still gunning for him. I, I took a brief moment where I wasn't gunning for him and I was turning most of my attention towards Hannah Waddingham, but I'm kind of back on the Trask train going you're so sus. You're so sus, sir. I don't like you. Never trust a Trask. Um... But yeah, there's that. Now the big thing I want to talk about, which I'm sure you guys have been waiting for me to get to, I want to talk about the amazing thing that is on the table apart from book. I don't know if this is an Easter egg for us <laughs> or something else. There are Sanderson sister t-shirts on the table. And they look like they came straight from Etsy, which cracks me up. Which, honest to God, I hope they didn't steal designs from Etsy, because that, that'd be freaking rude. Like, that'd be really freaking rude, Disney. Um, <laughs> but there are, there are Sanderson sister t-shirts on the table. That's just, mwah. <laughs> that is chef's kiss. Mwah. Thank you. For that. I love that way more than I should. <laughs> but here's the thing. I like this Easter egg because I feel like it's Disney going, one, look at how much money this franchise makes us. We're kind of idiots for dealing with it in the way we have. They haven't thought about that last part, but I had to put that in there. But I think it's also, it's kind of like the costume contest. It's another homage to the fans. It's another homage to the fans. They're like, we see you guys wearing the shirts. We see you guys loving the Sanderson sisters so much. Here's our way of saying, yeah, they love them in Salem too. Um, this kind of thing. And it could just be leading more to my theory on Gilbert. He's selling these to be like, yeah, they're legendary figures in this town. But they're actually not the bad guys. Um, I mean, I don't know. I really love them. 
I just really love that they put t-shirts on the table. It just makes me so happy. Because <laughs> it's, it's just Disney's little... We understand. We know you love these three witches. We know you love them to death. So we put these here because we know you guys are probably going to want to buy these. I swear if these if these don't end up in stores or something, I'm going to honestly be a little bit mad. Like, I'm not kidding. I might be a little salty if they don't put those exact designs out. <laughs> like, I want those t-shirts. Please and thank you. <laughs> um, but I love that they're putting merchandise in the show. Or in the, in the movie. It just... <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> and I think that's the point. It's a perfect sight gag. It is a perfect sight gag. I love it. That is just, like I said, it is chef's kiss. That is just beautiful. Oh my gosh. I really do think that's a big thing for the fans, though. Oh my gosh. I think that's so funny. I don't think that's going to have any, like, significance impacting the story or anything. It would probably make for a funny gag with the sisters, let's be real. They see their faces on t-shirts and they'd just be so confused. <laughs> they would be so confused and it would be so funny. Like, it'd be so great. I want, I want to see them befuddled whenever they see that for the first time, because I think they will be befuddled. But, oh my gosh, y'all... Y'all, it's going to be so much fun. That's just so much fun. But I like this image as a whole. Let's just talk about it as a whole real quick. Because tell me that doesn't look like it just came out in 1993. Like, tell me that image doesn't look like it came out in the 90s. It looks like it could have been a deleted scene from the first one. Like, that's... That's amazing. They look amazing. Which I really... <sighs> I'm really jealous of everybody with the D23 magazine right now. Um, because <laughs> I want to read everything. I want to read the whole article. If, if one of you guys can get that to me, I would just be so thrilled. I would love it so much. Because I really want to read the entire interview and everything. Now, with that said, I want to go into this because, um... My good friend over at Hocus Pocus Guide did send me this uh, image um, so I could look at it and break it down for you guys. They also posted um, some of the quotes that came along with this image. And the first one was from Bet. Um, and it's, it's more of a full thing on the one I referenced uh, the other day. Uh, the post said, it's a message to the fans. I hope they take it into their hearts the way they did the first one and know that we thought about them every single day. Kathy especially acted as the keeper of the black flame candle. Forgive my pun. She was adamant about what the fans would and wouldn't expect. <sighs> Does it not just warm the very recesses of your heart to know that the three of them every single day on set were they were thinking of us? Like, and especially Kathy. Um... Even Bet said Kathy was kind of the leader. Like, it just warms every, every piece of my heart. Every little piece of my heart. Because they love the movie. They loved working on the movie. We're the, and we took the Sanderson sisters into our hearts very quickly. We love them so much. And they love them. They love the characters. The fact that they thought about us every day that they were on the set, just, that's dedication. You don't hear this a lot. You don't. You don't hear it a lot. And I think it's amazing that they are that dedicated to us and they know how dedicated we are to them. It's just, it's so great. It's so great. And honestly, I hope that 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 statement puts to ease a lot of people's tension. I know it put a lot of my worries to rest. Um, just knowing that Kathy was in there pitching for us, being like, hey, they won't like this. They will like this. Kind of just running the show a little bit. And we know Bet ran the set with an iron fist. We haven't heard much from Sarah. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, she came back. That's the important part. <laughs> um, like, God, just, 
thank you. Thank you, girls. We, we love you. <laughs> we love you so much. And I have every intention of just, I'm going into it with an open mind and being ready for everything. Frankly, I really think we're in for a real treat. I don't think this is a trick. This is a treat. And <laughs> no, not everybody's going to be happy with it. That's just, that's everything. Not everyone's going to be happy with everything. And Ann Fletcher actually also talked in this uh, magazine. She said, it's incredibly daunting. You want to give the fans what they've been waiting 29 years for without being redundant. See, I'm going to pause real quick before I finish reading her statement. That is something a lot of sequels don't take into consideration. You want something that echoes the first one, but you don't want it to be a carbon copy. And I think that's what a lot of people are having issues with right now, is they kind of want that carbon copy, but if they were to get a carbon copy, they would be really upset. Because it's like, well, this is just the first one again. Where's the originality? So if they... And I... I know I keep bringing this up. If they were to do something different, i.e. redeeming the Sanderson sisters, they would be doing something different, but I think they would do it in such a way that it would echo the first one and make things work. I really... Again, I'm in the camp of I just want more Sanderson sisters. I'll be happy with whatever they do. If they choose to do a redemption arc, I hope it's done well. Um... But we root for them. <laughs> we root for them so hard. And the fact that even the director was kind of like, we know how hard this is going to be. We knew how hard this was going to be going into it. That gives me a lot of hope that they were really, really thinking on this one. Okay, so back to her quote. I also kept in mind that there's a slew of people who have never seen the first movie, if you can imagine. I will tell you right now, I do not trust somebody who has never seen Hocus Pocus. If you look me in the eye and tell me you have never seen that movie and I can tell you're not kidding, I have to fix it immediately or I will not trust you. I am dead serious. <laughs> have you been living under a rock? <laughs> Just like, I don't, I don't trust your kind. <laughs> um... You want to make sure they understand everything without being expositional every five minutes and do that in a really elegant way. Yes, Anne Fletcher, I agree with everything you said. You really... You really don't want a ton of exposition. If you want a ton of exposition, do a friggin' prequel. We don't want that right now. We don't want that in this. More backstory through a couple of flashbacks? Great. That's great. But you don't want to have to repeat the first um, movie within, like, the entire time you're going. Because we've seen the first movie. If you need to understand what this is, go watch the first movie before you watch the second one. And the thing is, I think that's going to be happening for anybody on this earth who has actually not seen this movie, which still shakes me to my very core. They'll see the trailer for this one. They probably have already seen the teaser trailer. And they'll be like, oh, I guess I need to watch the first one if I'm going to watch the second one. And they'll probably go watch the first one. Um... So, I think it's going to be a vehicle that also gets people to watch the first one as well as the second one. But I agree, we don't want exposition out the wazoo. We don't need exposition out the wazoo. If you want all of that, do a prequel. Um, so yeah. Guys, <laughs> I really... This image got me excited, and then it followed with those two posts. Thank you, Hocus Pocus Guide, for keeping me in the loop, by the way. I really appreciate you. Um, you've been a very good... I'm going to go on and say, you've been a very good friend to me during this whole process, and I hope I have reciprocated that um, to you. You are very cool, and I enjoy this so much. But yes, this image, there's a lot going for it, but it does look like it just came out in 1993, and it just makes me so happy because they are clearly keeping us in mind. And that's where I kind of get a little annoyed with nitpicking. Oh, Sarah's wig doesn't look right. Oh, this, that, or something else doesn't look right. 
if that's your biggest complaint, this is going to be a fire movie. This is going to be an amazing movie. If your biggest complaint is, oh, Sarah's wig doesn't look right. Look. <laughs> I can look past that. Because it's Sarah Sanderson. <laughs> it's the Sanderson sisters. We're getting them back. We're lucky to get this at all. Stop nitpicking. The movie's not even out yet. <laughs> like, it's... I try not to get mad about it, but after a while, it just grates on the nerves. <laughs> so, my... My biggest concern has been, and always will be, the story. If the story's crap, it doesn't matter how much you polish it up. It's still crap. So... I'm really excited to see where this goes. Speaking of, <laughs> real quick before we wrap up. So today I've been keeping an eye on Instagram and Hocus Pocus Guide and I have tossed it back and forth. Um, Bette Midler posted something on Instagram. It was a still from the movie, no caption. Then you go to the official Twitter for Hocus Pocus 2. They posted something. And I believe what they said... Hang on. Okay, and what they said on the Twitter account, on the official Hocus Pocus 2 Twitter account, it said, um, as summer nears its end, their power grows. And then Adam Shankman, the executive producer and original director of this before it got handed over to Ann, Fle Ann Fletcher, posted the exact same still with the word incoming. So, Bet posted, Adam posted, and the official Hocus Pocus 2 Twitter posted, all within an hour of each other. So, <laughs> keep your eyes on social media tomorrow, guys. Something is coming. I don't know what it is, but something's coming. And I'm like, they wouldn't dare put out a trailer yet. <laughs> they wouldn't dare. Disney Plus Day is on September 8th. And first day of D23 is September 9th. They wouldn't. But they might. <laughs> we don't know. They might drop some new merch. They might... See, I don't think it could be merch. I really don't think it could be merch. Because of who posted. If it had just been the official Twitter, maybe. But the executive producer and Winifred friggin' Sanderson herself <laughs> posted... It ain't gonna be a small thing like, here's new t-shirts. <laughs> it's not gonna be that. It's gonna be something way bigger. I could also be blowing this out of proportion, which I really hope I'm not. But, guys, something's up. Something is cooking. It might be tomorrow. It might be in the next couple of days. But, wouldn't they hint closer to, like, a date for something if it was a ways off? I really, really, really think we need to keep our eyes on social media tomorrow. Because something's up. Something is brewing. And I don't know what it is, but I'm like, I'm over here on pins and needles. I've got to edit this and I'm going, Oh, is something going to drop in the next, like, hour and a half? Am I going to have to, like, put this off or something? No. If, if something drops tomorrow, you'll see it tomorrow night. <laughs> you'll just get two uploads in one day and I'll just be like, ha ah. <laughs> But it'll be fine. It'll be great. So, holy crap. I know I kind of did like half the new image breakdown and half talking about the D23 magazine, but that is all I have for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't. It's free. It helps me. And what helps me helps you guys get more great content like this. We are having a live stream event on September 29th, the night before Hocus Pocus 2 drops. I will be live streaming a watch along of Hocus Pocus right here on the channel. Not the sequel, the first one. Let me make that really clear real quick. We're watching the first one together. When I do my full watch along of Hocus Pocus 2, it is not live. <laughs> that is pre-recorded because that's going to be the beginning of Content Armageddon. <laughs> I'm going to be so busy that week. Um, but 
We're going to be live streaming um, a watch along of Hocus Pocus on here. I'll have it playing on my computer. You guys will have it playing on either your TV, your phone, wherever you can watch it. Um, I'll tell you when to go, and we're going to go, and we're going to go for the entirety of the movie, maybe a little bit after. Um, you guys can ask me questions during it. I'll do a running commentary. We're just going to hang out in the chat, and we're going to have a lot of fun the night before Hocus Pocus 2 comes out. Now, with that said, if we hit 1,200 subscribers by September 15th, your girl will dress up as one of the Sanderson sisters, but you're not going to know which one it is until I turn on my camera or you turn on your computer, whichever one happens first. Um, I'll be dressing up as one of them if we can hit 1,200 subscribers by September 15th. If you're a regular on the channel, please remember to drop a like and share your thoughts on this topic down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Casey Zogelman, aka the Fort Sanderson sister, and I will see you witches and wizards later. I am